Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 16. A and B genes are linked. What shall be the genotype of the progeny in a cross between capital A, capital B, slash small a, small b, and small a, small b, slash small a, small b. So what does this mean? What does this representation mean? This representation means that capital A, capital B are linked together. Similarly, small a, small b are linked together. I mean, capital A, capital B alleles are together. Small a, small b alleles are together. And in this case, again, small a, small b together, small a, small b together. So this basically means somewhat like this. Like if these are the, this represents the homologous chromosome. So this is capital A, capital B, this is small a, small b. And this, in this case, this is small a, small b. This is again small a, small b. This is what it means. So now when you have a cross between these two, so what are the possible gametes that you might get from this? So there are only two possibility, capital A, capital B and small a, small b. In this case, what are the possible gametes? Small a, small b, small a, small b. Right? So now, what would be, what kind of progeny will be there? So let us see. Let, let us look at the possibilities. So this would be capital A, capital B, small a, small b. Capital A, capital B, small a, small b. Small a, small b, small a, small b. Again, small a, small b, small a, small b. So this is how the progeny would look like. So what are the genotypes of the progeny? So one genotype is capital A, capital B, small a, small b. That is capital A, capital B, small a, small b. The other genotype is all of them small. That is small a, small b, small a, small b. So therefore, B is the right option. Question number 17. Hybridization between capital T, small t and small t, small t gives rise to the progeny of ratio. So let's find it out. Capital T, capital T crossed with small t, small t. I'm sorry, it is capital T, small t crossed with small t, small t. So the gametes that you will get out of this is capital T, small t. The gametes you'll get out of this is small t, small t. So let us see how they can fuse with each other. So this would be capital T, small t, capital T, small t, small t, small t, small t, small t. So in this case, what is the ratio of the progeny? So if you look at this, so you have capital T, capital T, 2 out of 4 capital T, again 2 out of 4. So if you see the proportion of capital T, small t, 2 out of 4. If you look at the proportion of small t, small t, it is again 2 out of 4. So if you find out their ratio, the ratio is 2 is to 2, which is basically 1 is to 1. A is the right option. Question number 18. Genetic identity of a human male is determined by autosome, nucleolus, sex chromosome, cell organelles. Now, whenever you talk about the genetic identity of a human male, so what makes a human being male or female? How is that determined looking at the genetic makeup of, an, or of a human being? So basically, the sex of any human being is determined by the sex chromosomes. So if you look at the look at the sex chromosomes for a male it is xy and if you look at the sex chromosomes for a female it is xx so overall if you look at the total number of chromosomes both male and female have 46 chromosomes both of them have 44 autosomes and two sex chromosomes the 44 autosomes they look exactly similar the only difference is in the x chrom the sex chromosomes in male it is xy and in female it is xx and what happens during fertilization? Now, during fertilization, the male can contribute a X. The male can also contribute a Y. Because during fertilization, both male and female, they contribute half of their total number of chromosomes. So each of them contribute 22 autosomes plus one sex chromosome. So when you talk about that sex chromosome, a male can contribute either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. What about the female? Now the female has only X chromosome. So the female will always contribute the X chromosome. 
So in case the male contributes the X chromosome, so then the sex of the child would be a girl. In case the male contributes the Y chromosome, in that case the sex of the child would be a boy. So it totally depends on the male, human male, that whether the child that is going to be born would be a male or a female. So if the male contributes X, then the child would be girl. If the male contributes Y, the child would be a boy. Question number 19. A person with 47 chromosomes due to an additional Y chromosome suffers from a condition called Down syndrome, super female, Turner syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome. Now here, if you, the, okay, so first of all, we will try to uh, eliminate the options which are not applicable. So you see here, the, the difficulty or the abnormality arises due to the Y chromosome. So let us look at the first option, it is Down syndrome. Now we all know that Down syndrome has nothing to do with the sex chromosomes. Down syndrome is a chromosomal disorder where there is autosomal abnormalities. That is there are issues with the autosome. So obviously Down syndrome is not an option. Super female. Now super females are those who have additional X chromosomes. So they are like normal females. They would have XX. Like when you look at the sex chromosomes of normal females, they would have XX. Now, if the females have additional X in the X chromosomes like XXX or XXXX or so on, they are super females. So they are also Y chromosome has no role to play. So super females again is not an option. Next is Turner syndrome. So if you look at Turner syndrome also, there also Y chromosome doesn't play a role. So we are left out with Klinefelter syndrome. So what happens in Klinefelter syndrome? So Klinefelter syndrome is characterized with 47 chromosomes X, X, Y. So here, how do we know that there is an additional Y chromosome? Now let us talk about a normal female. So how would a normal female would be? So in a normal female, you would have 46 chromosomes, normal female I'm talking about. We will have a total of 46 chromosomes and how would the sex chromosomes look like in a normal female? It would be XX. But if this female is suffering from Klinefelter syndrome, in that case, the female has an additional Y chromosome. So when you have one additional Y chromosome, the total count of the chromosome also increases to 47. And this is what is asked in the question. So that time, this is a Klinefelter syndrome. Now, there is another such disease which happens due to additional Y chromosome and that is super males. In super males, what happens is there are additional Y chromosomes. So, super males could have also been an option but in this case, it is not at all in the option. So, obviously here, Klinefelter syndrome is the correct option. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.